You look so amazing. <laughs> Seriously, that is truly true emotion. Really, it is. Yeah. It is. You, do, you look absolutely stunning. Turn yeah, around, let me see. Not too bad. Turn yeah. around. Yeah. Yep. Always in the back. Nice. Nice. Awesome. I like the shawl collar. The what? The shawl collar. Shawl collar. Yeah. The wrap around thing. Oh, all right. Well, I have a special gift for you. And I have some memories behind it. So pardon me if I'm going to read it but I don't want to miss anything. So, um, as you're well aware, you come from a long line of strong, smart, independent women who loved and protected their families with their every breath. This, however, is largely due to the loving, supportive, and encouraging husbands that they were married to. So when you look at this gift that I'm giving you, I want you to notice that this is representative of um, Grandma B. This is Grandma B's um, ribbon from her bouquet. And she was married to a very strong man, but she was as strong as she was because of him. This is from Grandma Britt Betty Lou's wedding dress. And you know how strong she was and how much she would love to be here. It's actually from my dress. And I am who I am because of that, being supportive of me. And these are very special pearls from Grandma Ginny's Veil, vale, because she donated her wedding dress to some vintage store or somebody. So, anyways, I'm going to have you wear this on the inside of your jacket closest to your heart so that you will always remember all the strong women that are behind you. And that um, want you to draw on that strength and make sure that this doesn't look through. So you, no one will see this except you. And um, the key is to remember to put this on the end of the night. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and not send it back to the store with it off. So I have a few more words here. It's close to your heart. Tell you a little history because real quick, I promise. Emma is waiting for you. <laughs> so this pin um, was made, I told you, from Grandma B's wedding bouquet, and she was married 57 years. Grandma Brian's dress married 62 years. Grandma Ginny's dress, 57, or Grandma Ginny's veil, 57 years, and Dad and I 33 years and counting. So that's representative of 209 years of marriage. And may you just draw upon those years, uh, wearing it close to your heart. Um, and then there was a whole saying, behind every successful man was a strong woman, but truly behind every strong woman is a man who loves unconditionally and selflessly by putting her needs before his. This is God's plan for marriage. And so please draw on the Lord's strength when things might be difficult. I love you, and I know that you are going to be the best husband for Emma. Because you have been so supportive of her through all these years. Oh, I'm so you guys. I love you. I love you so much. Let's have a great day, yes, a hard. great party. Oh, I have a special little box for you, but then later on, I'll give it to you later on. Okay? I love you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Emma, my teachers, you look absolutely stunning tonight. You are the most beautiful woman in our world. I can't believe that we finally made this whole wedding today. This is something that we've been looking forward to, not just since when we got engaged, but for many years prior. To I prayed and dreamed about this today for many years, and it is such an honor to be marrying you today. Do you remember the first time that we met? And, and do you remember how you started our first conversation? You instantly captured my attention, you, and, and you instantly captured my heart that day. And you continue to capture my attention and my heart every day since. I've always been enamored by your creativity, your ability to have fun, and your drive to make others feel comfortable. I've never met anyone who's more genuine, genuinely in himself, and myself and many others have you for that. You have this amazing ability to make anywhere feel like home. Yes, it could be the cute throw pillows and blankets that you pick up at first school in or anthropology. But I think it's because you make people feel safe, loved, and cared for whenever you go around them. You have this way of comforting me when I'm stressed or anxious, and you make all of the boring things in life way more fun. When we are together, time cruises by, and our conversations are effortless. I feel like we have this superpower together to be able to create memories anytime, anything. From weird inside jokes when we don't even know where they started, some of my most vulnerable, broken down moments in my life, you've always made me feel safe, loved, and supported each and every day. I'm the luckiest man alive, and I am the luckiest man alive to be marrying you here today. I'm forever, forever grateful that you gave me another chance after my car got towed on our very first official date. You make everything in life better. With that, here are my vows to you. I promise to always be faithful to you and to never stop loving you to the day that I met. I promise to always protect you and our family and to work my hardest to provide and support and support for all of our needs. I promise to provide endless back scratches and head scratches for both in bed. I promise to try to remember to wipe down the counters after I finish cooking this dinner. I promise to always be your sweatshirt and to warm you up when you're cold. I promise to never stop trying to impress you and to make you laugh at least once every single day. Lastly, I promise to always be your best friend, no matter what. Over the years, I have kept about 30 letters and notes and cards you have written. Most of those cards are signed, love always, and love. You love me unconditionally for who I am, and you help me see the world in a way that I would never see it by myself. I'm so thankful to have a best friend to go mess with. I love you so much, I miss you. With love, forever and always, Dawn. Dylan, seven years of dating, and we're finally here. I knew very early on in my relationship that I wanted to marry you. That realization of income was one big character of my life, but rather a collection of small moments. Each one uncovering another beautiful part of my life. There was a point where I began to wonder how could this guy possibly be more perfect for me? <laughs> and sure enough, you find a way to one up yourself. My favorite thing about you is your incredible steadiness, your unwavering sense of calm, and evenness of character has a way of making every challenge we face easier and any moment of chaos slow down enough to be manageable. I feel nearly invincible when we are together. Over the years, I've made a lot of promises to you, but on this day, these I feel most. Dylan, I promise to celebrate you often 
through all all the amazing things that you do in your life. And to stand by you with love, patience, and support when things don't go as easy. I promise to continue to learn about you, your dreams, goals, hobbies, what in, what motivates you and what inspires you. Because over time things shift and change and I want to be all in. I promise to always be the ideas committee to your communications committee. <laughs> to keep laughing at your lame jokes, which I like your jokes. I don't know why people say they're lame. <laughs> and to chase how with you every chance you get. Above all, I promise to love you. To be thankful every day that God made us perfectly for each other. And that we get to spend the rest of
Thank mm-hmm. you.
Please stand in honor of our bride. We're here today to celebrate the marriage of Emma Marie T.P. and Dylan Thomas Bryan. Dave and Kathleen, Andrew and Jackie, you've raised phenomenal children into beautiful, fun, and compassionate adults. I hope you're sitting in the joy of your labor today. You must be proud. Dylan and Emma, seven years in the making, and you made it to today. Take a deep breath, look each other in the eyes, Allow yourself to really feel this moment. Emma, you look gorgeous. Like radiant. And Dylan, I love seeing you in love with her in all of her beauty and strength. Happy that she's yours. Today is a good day. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this day of celebration and for the reason we are here to begin with, that you brought Dylan and Emma together that you've grown them in relationship with one another and with you. Today, we get to celebrate them because of your goodness. Amen.
Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 through 14. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. If one has a complaint and gets another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Dylan and Emma, as your friend and pastor, I could not be more excited for you to begin your life as husband and wife today. You are so good for each other, and I truly believe in this marriage. You're good for each other for many reasons, but there's three I'm gonna highlight this evening for your friends and family. You're good for each other because of your work and determination and building a life with God as your foundation. You're good for each other because of the ways you love and support one another and because of your mutual zeal for living a fun, adventurous life. In the Bible, in the book of Matthew, Jesus urges us to hear his words and act on them in order to live our lives on a firm foundation. Dylan and Emma, I've witnessed you take this to heart. You've leaned in spiritually over the last couple of years as you've prepared for marriage, and I've seen God meet you in that. You've practiced hearing his voice. You've practiced prayer. You've practiced growing together and in community with others. And the effort you've made to build your life on God is your firm foundation. I've seen him pursue you. He's matured you. He's called you to even greater adventures in this life. You are truly building your life together on a firm foundation. Dylan and Emma, you're good for each other because of the ways that you um, love and support one another. As part of their premarital process, Dylan and Emma shared some of their favorite memories with me. There are some definite through lines, travel, new experiences, making the most of whatever comes your way, and loads of laughter and inside jokes. And when I read these memories, I also saw unwavering support for one another, the type of support that we see in scripture. Ephesians 5.22 puts it this way, wives understand and support your husbands in a way that show that your support for Christ. The husband provides leadership to his wife the way Christ does to his church, not by domineering, but by cherishing. So just as the church submits to Christ as he exercises such leadership, wives should likewise submit to their husbands. Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives, exactly as Christ did for the church, a love marked by giving, not getting. His words evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring out the best of her. And that is how husbands ought to love their wives. Dylan, I see godly leadership in the memories the two of you shared. Your patient and tender leadership kept Emma pursuing God and has led to some of your greatest moments of spiritual growth as a couple. Dylan, you led through every challenging moment that you guys faced together. You made space for laughter. You encouraged Emma to travel and to ski again after her accident. You've made memories with her regardless of how perfect or not the circumstances were. And goodness, Emma, we all know and can see he is crazy about you. He lights up every time you enter the room, every single time. Dylan, your love for Emma is big, bigger than you can even comprehend sometimes. And it's evident by the way you champion her, by the way you fully delight in her, and especially by the way you watched her walk towards you this evening. That verse in Ephesians, it's saying that's how Jesus looks at you. He looks at you with a love so big he can hardly comprehend. And the love for you will make a way for you to love Emma well, even when challenges come your way. Emma, in reading the two, and in reading the memories you two shared, I see wisdom and how you partner with Dylan that is beyond your years. 
from saving your first date by instantly supporting Dylan through what felt like an embarrassing mistake to taking him down to one of your favorite spots along the river to offer the encouragement he needed during a difficult semester of college. The way you treat him uplifts Dylan and encourages him to be his best. I think your wisdom in supporting him so well comes from knowing deep within you that Dylan will honor and protect you and your relationship together no matter what. That feeling of being protected and that feeling of being fully delighted in, those feelings are powerful because they show you that Dylan's going to stay with you no matter what. He'll never leave you. That verse in Ephesians reflects that he is to be like Jesus, our groom who never leaves us and made the greatest sacrifice of all time. He laid down his life so we could have life. So Dylan, from this day on, your job is to love Emma like Jesus loves you, to lay down your life for her, even when it feels like sacrifice. Emma, your job from this day on is to honor and respect Dylan the way we are to honor and respect Jesus, to uplift and encourage him to be his best as a leader and as a man, especially when he's doubting. And finally, you two are good for each other because of your mutual zeal for living a full and adventurous life. And so Dylan and Emma, I bless you with a life of adventure, a life of mutual sacrifice and deep unconditional love. May your home be one that is warm, forever filled with peace and happiness. May you always feel the love of your families and may their support for you and for this marriage carry you through whatever life brings. May you develop friendships that last a lifetime, friends that become family. And may you come to know just how much God loves you, how high and wide and long and deep his love is. And may that propel you to live a fully adventurous life together. Dylan and Emma, it's time to declare your intentions for today, the day you become husband and wife. Dylan, do you come before this gathering of family and friends to proclaim your love and devotion for Emma? Do you promise to affirm her, respect her, and care for her during times of joy and hardship? Do you promise to exercise patience in all things, including but not limited to Emma occasionally driving over the curb? <laughs> Do you pledge to remain faithful to her for as long as you both shall live? Emma, do you come before this gathering of friends and family to proclaim your love and devotion for Dylan? Do you promise to affirm him, respect him, and care for him during times of joy and hardship? Do you promise to exercise patience in all things, including but not limited to Dylan falling asleep during every movie you watch together? I do. Do you pledge to remain faithful to him for as long as you both shall live? Dylan and Emma wrote their own vows for this evening based on the vision statement they wrote for their marriage. It's a true testament of the intentionality they're putting into their relationship as they enter the covenant of marriage. So Dylan and Emma, it's time to promise your love and commitment in the presence of your friends and family. Dylan, repeat after me. I, Dylan, take you, Emma, to be my wife. I promise to build you up, never to tear you down. and to put our relationship over self-interests. I promise to love you tirelessly and abundantly. I promise to never stop pursuing God and new adventures alongside you. And I promise to laugh with you, to be your best friend, and to not take life too seriously. Emma, repeat after me. I, Emma, take you, Dylan, to be my husband. I 
promise to build you up and never tear you down and put our relationship over self-interest. I promise to love you tirelessly and abundantly. I promise to never stop pursuing God and in your adventures alongside you. I promise to laugh with you, to be your best friend, and to not take life too seriously. These vows today are sealed by an exchange of rings. Dylan, place this ring on Emma's left hand. Emma, I give you this ring as a symbol of our vows. With all that I am and all that I have, I will love you forever. Emma, place this ring on Dylan's left hand. Dylan, I give you this ring as a symbol of our vows with all that I am and all that I have. I will love you forever. Prayer is the conscious decision to remind ourselves that God is our most important relationship and that communication with him is the foundation of the life he made us for. Dylan and Emma will take a private moment to pray together as they start their new marriage. Guests, you're invited to pray quietly with them and for them and their future life together. A man shall leave his mother and father and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one. What God has joined together, let no man separate. Dylan and Emma, based on the vows you made to each other before God and these witnesses, and having sealed these vows with the giving and receiving of rings, by the authority given to me through Jesus Christ in the state of Ohio, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Dylan and Emma Brian Dylan, you may kiss your bride.
traveled all across the country. Tonight we have family from California, we have folks from Chicago, we have folks from Texas, we have folks from many, many other states across the country, and we're just thankful everyone came here to celebrate Emma and I. Um, but more importantly, I just want to say a huge shout out to the Teepees and the Bryan family, so Andy and Jackie, Emma's parents, and then my parents, Dave and Kathleen as well. Um, if you get a chance, you get a chance to talk to them tonight, introduce yourself. If you haven't met them yet, talk to them tonight. They deserve every moment of this just as much as Emma and I do. So um, that is all for me. I'm going to pass it off to Emma after this. But thank you all again for being here. It means the world. Um, and let's have some fun. Again, thank you so much for being here. Um, thank you so much for your generosity. Um, I mean, over the past 
three, four, five months, like we would get emails from the knot saying like that we've that someone's contributed to our funds or like you guys send gifts to our houses and you know that just brings a smile to our face and we just feel so loved every time something showed up on our doorstep. So thank you guys so so much for everything. Um, and special shout out today. Um, we have a birthday in the house. Ben, Mr. 27 over here. So if you thought this was a wedding for us, um, you're mistaken because it's actually his birthday party. <laughs> um, again, thank you guys so much for everybody who had a hand in making today happen. You guys know who you are. I mean, we couldn't have done it without you. So, um, with that, let's have a great night. <laughs>
when, that, when Emma showed up on the scene, he's like, who's this? And why is mom paying so much attention to that? That attention is supposed to be over here. So as a result of that, Emma and I, when, the, when we went anywhere together as a foursome, Matt had his mom's hand and I had Emma. And she was a little tiny thing, light as a feather, and I carried her around everywhere we went. She was such a happy little thing. <laughs> light as a feather. I toss her up in the air, twirl her around, catch her. She loved it. She would giggle and would just make me laugh. It was a lot of fun. I remember it like it was yesterday. And I've been known to utter on multiple occasions. Honey, I'd take six more just like her. I think you've heard that before. <laughs> Not sure how many times I uttered that after she became about, I don't know, one and a half or two. <laughs> and every time we put her in her crib at night to go to bed, she was, I don't know, I don't know it was like an innate ability to climb out of that crib. She could climb out of that crib, hit the floor, and she could reach up, and I don't even know how she could reach that doorknob. This tall. And she could reach up and grab that doorknob and open that door and come out. She would show up, you know. Matt would go to bed. Matt would say, I'm tired. He'd say, okay, Matt, go to bed. He'd say, okay, good night, good night. Off to bed he'd go. This one? This one right here? Mm -mm. No. We found out many years later that that's, there was a, a, a name for that disease. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you have heard it. FOMO. <laughs> she had FOMO disease. At one and a half. <laughs> we thought that was a phase that was going to end fairly soon. It did. If I had known it was going to last as long as it did, I put a dead ball on the door. <laughs> I started off trying to bungee cord the door close. That didn't work. She could grab that knob and hold the door open far enough and she could squeeze out. So now I thought, okay, I can outlast this little thing. No problem. I'm going to sit on the floor outside the door and I'm going to reach up and hold that doorknob <laughs> until she goes back to bed. Guess who won? Yeah. I hit my feet holding that door up like this. My arms get tired. And next thing I know, I hear this little, little giggle voice. And I see two little hands with fingers cut underneath the door, waiting on their fingers, giggling. You remember that? She was a little pissed. Still is. Also, trying to discipline this girl. That was something that just, for whatever reason, couldn't do it. For all the brother Matt, all I had to do was give him the dad stern look, give him my stern dad voice, and he would it would almost bring tears to his eyes, and I mean, he was off the phone. This one right here, it ended, up, it ended up two ways when I tried that with her. First result was I couldn't hold it in longer than three seconds, so I was laughing before I could. That was the first result. I would just start laughing. Second result, I could hold it for five or six seconds, long enough for me to get up, run out of the room, and hope she didn't hear me laughing. <laughs> fun, fun. <laughs> Emma, the door of her older brother 
we met, did just about everything he did. And he always let it tag along. And that's why we're such great friends today. Matt had Emmett digging in the mud for worms, catching toads, salamanders, and snakes. Usually not a good outcome for the little critters they caught, but you know, that's another story for another day. And uh, I mean, Matt mentioned this last night, for those that were in attendance last night, Emma was Matt's football tackling dummy. <laughs> he put on his shoulder pads, jersey, helmet. He put shoulder pads, jersey, helmet on her, hand her the football, back up about four steps, and take off at her, and knock her flat. It's a wonder they're so tight. I don't know. But they had fun. She, I don't think she ever cried. I don't, I don't know if you ever cried. She's, you stop. They started skiing, tubing, age three and four. Talked about that last night too. They would tube for hours behind that boat. And Jack and I would look at each other after about an hour and go, can we be done yet? Can we stop? We didn't know. We kept on. And I remember the day Emma was born. Took one look at her and thought, she looks just like Abby T.B. Murphy. That's her very name, yeah. Look just like her. And as it turns out, they act a lot alike, too. They're funny, off the wall, zany, just zany personalities. Emma's a lot like a mom. Thoughtful, empathetic, kind, and compassionate. And I'm still trying to figure out what good quality she got for me. Stubborn, maybe? At times? I don't know if that's good. Sorry about that. Emma, you mean the world to your mom and me. Words cannot express the love we have for you. We know you have truly found the right man for you. Dylan is a lot like you. He's kind, compassionate, thoughtful. And you know, I wrote this before last night. And the next line here is, and the bonus is, he's fun. But I found out last night from some of the groomsmen and the guys that are in this fraternity. And what what award, what award was it that you won? I remember. We, least hilarious. so fortunate to have had six more just like you. And if we did, we would hope for six more just like Joe. Now I'm doing
May the Lord turn his face to you and give you peace. To the long and happy marriage of Emma and Dylan.
could not be happier for the both of you. Wish you many years of love ahead and companionship. To Emma Dillon. to ignore. Whether it be dancing in a torrential downpour on a hike, uh, cheering, sorry, I mean shouting at the Bengals, yeah. yep, yeah. or mixing you a drink just right, Emma is a force of excitement who can make anything ten times more fun. And all that being said, it's even more fulfilling to see you happy with someone who can match and mellow your energy. <laughs> Dylan stands close enough to your side so that you feel supported, but is comfortable enough to watch you shine and sparkle on your own. He giggles with you while you play sous chef in the kitchen. He becomes a calm hero when there's a flat tire in the middle of the woods. True story, none of us knew how to change a tire, but Dylan stepped up. <laughs> and he leaves two Tylenol for you next to the bed after a late night. I'm so happy to see you as someone who treats you like the treasure you are. A love that started from across the table at Drunken Bento has blossomed into the beautiful love story we're celebrating today. And thank goodness, because he's actually tall enough to reach the top shelf where you keep the tequila. <laughs> Emma, you know how to make life brighter, more fun, and exciting no matter the day. I know that your journey with Dylan will be filled with so much love and laughter, and the occasionally perfectly shotgun beer. <laughs> May your marriage be as unique and wonderful as the both of you. Cheers to Emma. <laughs> Cheers. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, we got a, a copus man, Mr. Connor Bryan. What an incredible night so far. Hey, let's hear it again for Dylan and Emma. Look at this beautiful couple. Look at that. Emma and Dylan, thank you so much for letting me be involved in this day. Uh, I'm not only proud, just honored to be here and be able to stand up here in front of all of you and celebrate my brother. Uh, I want to thank the Cheekies and Matt as well for raising such a great daughter. And now I get to call my sister. Um, 
I think Emma lights up every room she walks into. She pushes the boundaries with Dylan, makes him get out of his comfort zone. Uh, but most importantly, she uh, pushes Dylan to be the man that he is today. A little bit about Dylan, I know I'll come back to you about Dylan becoming the man he is today. Uh, Dylan becoming as a three and was obviously treated that way. And I mentioned it a little bit where uh, Dylan was the catcher, the goalie, uh, hockey goalie, and was a quarterback because Debbie and I like to catch passes. We used to say, hey, Dylan, just go, yeah, go stand over there. Go, go protect him anything. Let's rock some soccer balls at you. We'll throw some fastballs. Just hold up the club. And so Dylan always wanted to be involved, and I think uh, he, he always found a way to do that. Uh, a story a little bit about him uh, that really sticks out to me is Evan talked about Dylan being a golden child. So Dylan was in National Honor Society, playing multiple sports, straight A student, getting a scholarship. It was always good, this, this perfect child. I think maybe it's because he got to see Evan and I screw up enough until he learned. So maybe, maybe he was hiding things better, or maybe he was just truly that good kid. So Evan and I are looking around like, what is this going to mess up? Like, we we got the story about mom and dad getting into trouble or getting in trouble at school. No, he was got stop free. Until about junior year, so I'm sitting at home on a Friday night, maybe it's like 9, 9.30, and my mom's in the other room, and I hear a phone call from Dylan called, yeah, uh, I popped, I popped your tire to my mom and I bent the rim. So I oh no, he got an accident, he backed up into something. And then we soon find out that Dylan, as you know, is a big racing fan, made a mental racetrack in the Mason High School parking lot. He started doing this for about three weeks in a row, and then finally he pushed it a little bit too far, trying to take a few seconds off the lap, and smoked one of the islands on the, on the parking lot. <laughs> And of course, I kept that in because I'm like, finally, it finally happened. Hey, he's in trouble. And then, of course, you have to clean dishes, clean the bathroom, do all that to pay that off. And I was like, okay, okay, now, now he's becoming a man. He's uh, starting to push the bathroom a little bit. Uh, so that, that was like, okay, it's getting better. And then, kind of in that same year, um, something Dylan and I got to share with baseball. So we grew up practicing together, hitting baseball in the garage. Determined everything together to help each other uh, become the best baseball players we could. We really were never teammates, or we never went against each other. And so then senior year, we're both on varsity, and most of the time I played short side, he played third. So again, we were on the same team, but never went against each other. Until we did an inner squad scrimmage. And I'm in the batter, or I'm in, on deck, and everyone's starting to realize that Dylan's pitching, Connor's coming up to the plate. And so then, oh, I get a little some murmurs happening, and going, oh, we got to grind and grind head off here. And so then, and people start wrapping around the cage and seeing it come. Now, I played with Dylan, so I know what he's, he's good at. He only throws a two seam as his fastball, and has a slider that's really good. So I'm going to, I, I know him, I've seen it a thousand times. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rip one here and show him up. But of course, I'm fighting for my life. I'm battling off, I'm finding, I'm getting, uh, staying in the battle box, but of course I get two strikes on me. I go, no, don't get try to do something cute here and sneak something by me. Uh, but he's not, he's not gonna throw a fastball. There's no way he's gonna do that. And of course, he rips a high fastball, I chase it, and, and strike three, everyone goes nuts. And, uh, So of course, I'm hearing from everyone um, in, in the locker room later the next two weeks. Um, and I think that was a moment where Dylan wasn't just this little brother anymore, but he's now my chief. And I think you are someone that I go to when I have any issues or any problems. Uh, and I think those moments leading up to us and then going to college, um, you've now become my best friend and just you've proven yourself as, as my peer. So now Dylan's my peer, and he's going on and accomplishing all these amazing things and, and academics and, and uh, with his friends and socially. But the greatest drug decision he's done is finding, finding, finding an incredible person like him. She truly pushes you, and I think pushes you to the boundaries of having a little bit more fun in life and not just being serious. Uh, Emma, Emma, as you know, she likes with every room and always makes a joke of everything and is always laughing. Uh, so I, we, I luckily went to college with Emma, so I got to get to know her and build a relationship. Uh, but I got a story about it when I knew I wanted you as a sister. So 
Joan and I were at uh, a bar called, called Woody, Coffee Bar, you see. And uh, we're doing the Future Mini 12 ounce curls. And we, uh, Emma hits us up and goes, hey, you and you guys come back over to my place. She lives down the street. Um, she'll make some food for us. And so Joan and I, of course. So while we're walking back, as brothers do, and we have Future Mini drinks, uh, you start choking a little bit. So we start going back and forth, and what ensues is a wrestling match on the grass next to Emma's house. Just being, being an idiot. And I remember Emma came over without like without hesitation, shoved us both back, said, you guys are idiots, you're acting like children. Come inside, don't talk to each other, I'm making mac and cheese. <laughs> Joe and I looked at each other, didn't say a word, just like put our hands behind our back and walked like, we're going to the principal's office, like, sorry, sorry mom. And I don't walk this inside and um, I knew that, I knew that you could handle Dylan, but that showed that you can handle uh, a family of brothers and you can hold your own and put us, whip us all into shape. And so that's something our family always needs. Uh, so I'm, I'm so happy that I've been able to spend my life with you, Dylan, and now I've, I've created such great man members with you, Emma, and I just I can't wait for the future. I think we're always going to find moments to create memories, and we always go the extra mile for each other. So for that, uh, let's cheers to Emma and Dylan.